Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and yes, it's me once again or it might be the first time depending on which order you watch today's videos in or if you're just new to this uh, channel. We are here to talk about a transfer signing and it's a little defensive reinforcement which if you know by watching this club we have badly needed but if you give me the next couple minutes of your time you're possible who? Who's this? Oh, I'm underwhelmed type attitude may just change as I think the more you'll hear about this guy, the more you'll like about this guy, and then eventually when we see him pulling on the Ranger shirt, we might just have another fan favourite. So aye, strap yourselves in ladies and gentlemen, let's go talk about the loan from Feyenoord and talk about the man that I'm very nervous to pronounce. That's right, I'm scared. Troops, all right, because you know me, I can't even differentiate the word free from the number free. So coming out here and chucking up a name like this, it mate, is making me very, very nervous. But what's fantastic is he's about as good as his name actually suggests. So I strap myself in, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and talk about the latest signing and discuss the player profile, his numbers and stats. So you leave today's video hopefully knowing a little bit more about the latest man coming in. To this old football club. Now, Noratio Casuandra, Joe. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I've nailed it. I don't know. I'm nervous about it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not trying to be smart here. It's just me being a bit daft. But to save us all from feeling very uncomfortable, as I felt everyone's arse cheeks just clench. And because of that clench, I'm just going to call him what he gets called during press conferences and during pitch side interviews. Nari, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I mean? Because if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me, so let's get on with that and stop offending everyone then, shall we? And I want to talk about Nare because Nare is actually a pretty damn good player. And he is a 22-year-old standing about 6 foot, 6 foot 1, right back. And I'm doing right back like this, ladies and gentlemen, because I know, on paper, on Google, and I think, if, honestly, if you actually asked him which position he likes to play, I'm pretty sure he would actually call himself a right back. But, again... As we dive deeper into this player profile and we start looking at this man's history and look at where he's actually played, you will see that he's played a large majority of his career actually at centre-half as well and in several other positions including left-back and defensive midfielder. So I, your eyes and ears aren't deceiving you as I have just described the Dutch Dujon Sterling and I don't know about you... But for everyone that said just get a team fully Sterling, who might have just done that, is this man's flexibility has been an incredible asset to his young career so far, been able to plug many gaps and plug little fixes. And again, we've got first-hand experience in that. We know what that is. We've seen Sterling. That's what this guy's been able to do at the age of 22 in the top flight of Dutch football, even out in his loan, which we'll speak about in the next couple minutes. And that's because, again, he is so flexible and been able to cover so many areas. As again, I wouldn't necessarily say he's great and amazing at one thing or anything like that, you know what I mean? Because again, standing at six foot, six foot one, is he big enough to be a centre half in Scottish football? Probably no, ladies and gentlemen, because of the way they actually handle it. But again, if you look at his power and his leap to be able to get up there, his pace, the track to his strength at the body, you can see he is a very, very talented player that again can shift up and play at centre defensive midfield and again play at right back. So he's had a very interesting career, but again, one thing that's been sure is, name matter where he's been asked to play, he's done a job. So that's why maybe the lazy comparison of Dujon Sterling actually goes, because that right there tells us exactly what type of player we've actually got. Someone that's all in all of the time, and it gives normally a very solid performance. That's him. You could say it's a jack of all trades, master of none, and that's maybe been his frustration as he's never been able to nail down what type of position he actually wants at fire or wanting to get to this level. That is a fair criticism of a 22-year-old footballer, ladies and gentlemen. But he's coming here on loan and for a team that's been so defensively, defensively vulnerable, I should say, to have someone like this that can lighten the burden on the Sterlings and plug many of the, the gaping holes in our team, Again, it's not the sexiest, it's not the prettiest, but is it one that makes sense? Absolutely. As again, he's a very talented young man. But believe it or not, there is some key differences I would actually say regarding him and Sterling, and most of it is actually on the eye, because you'd think as he's played a large majority of his career actually playing at centre-halves, he'd actually be more defensively sound than a Sterling, but I'd argue, and I'm probably long, wrong, sorry, as I usually am, and that Sterling still looks a lot better defensively, and I think that's why you've seen maybe the natural progression over to the right-hand side or a little bit forward, because his assets, Nare's assets, is getting on the ball. He's very clever with his feet, you know what I mean, you maybe see a wee cheeky nutmeg similar to what Ridvan Yilmaz does quite a lot, he's very good on that way, and I'd say technically on the ball, 
I would say he's actually better than Sterling, where Sterling's got that power and all that go and will get stuck in and nail somebody. That's not really this laddie's actual game, but he's quick and he gets about it and he's very comfortable on the ball. He does love a cheeky diag as well, which has which got some mixed results, in my opinion, as I've seen some people criticise his long ball that he tries all the times, but when it comes off, he obviously creates a bit of a danger as well. So, aye, ladies and gentlemen, I'd say he's a bit more attacking in that aspect and a lot more comfortable on the ball. But enough talking around the actual player, let's go ahead and get into the old numbers and stats then, shall we? Because you've seen a lot of the things that we've talked about and his player profile actually backed up almost instantly when you get to his numbers. Because if you look at his season so far, right, before he obviously came up the road to Rangers when he was at Feyenoord, he had played two games for Feyenoord this season. Both of them at right back, nah, nah. he reverted back to centre half after spending the large majority of the previous season actually at right back. Again, he's able to slot in to centre back. Now, you could make an argument that's because it's Dutch football and it's a bit slower building up for the back. He can go in there because he loves to get in the ball. Again, he likes to drift central. He likes to really get on it. He's not an out and out locksman. He's not going to break down players. He's not going to nail anybody that way. No, he lives and breathes getting on the football and getting as many touches as he can. So he naturally drips it, drifts in and almost makes it a back free if you actually want, but again, that's where he played for the small portion of that bit. I feel like we should go into the previous season as there's more numbers to actually break down. But taking it a step further than just saying he's played two games for Fire and then he's joined Rangers, because we're not really learning for that. Let's go back to that loan that we just mentioned a couple seconds ago, because it's going to start to back up and again tell you a lot about this laddie, right? Two games this year for Fire at centre-back. The previous year he played 28 games in all competitions, with again the large majority of them being at right-back. But he did cover in an other position several times during last season out on loan. Can you guess where it is? The smart money would be on centre-back with everything we've talked about, but it wasn't at centre-half, ladies and gentlemen. It was then at left-back, which again shows you how comfortable he is covering several positions on the actual park. And he actually played pretty well if you look at stats and statistical breakdown. Despite playing on the left, he actually done well on that. But the previous year, ladies and gentlemen, in the top flight in Dutch football, he played 24 games in all competitions for Feyenoord, where again he was back playing the majority of his time at centre half, but instead of playing the other games at right back, he played his other games at C, D, M. The Dutch Sterling could not be more of a better nickname. And again, I could keep going in and breaking down every individual season, but it's the same stuff, ladies and gentlemen, here, there, everywhere, especially defensively. And again, I'm not sitting saying he's a world beater or he's world class or, oh, he's absolutely amazing, but uh, there is something common about this type of signing where I know some people might be disappointed that's alone and might be disappointed it's all this stuff and maybe know someday you've naturally heard there and like but do you know what's comforting to me looking into this player for the long as I actually have is see when no matter where he's actually went he's actually got a good report, you know what I mean, the fans like him, and fans will tell you a lot about a player, because if they're gutty, or if they're sad, or if they're frustrated, they're losing a player, it usually means they're doing sad, and I feel like if we lost a Sterling, and if Sterling moved on, we'd be saying similar stuff, because it would be a massive frustration to lose someone that's like that, and can play multiple areas, and that's what he showed before he earned his move to Feyenoord, after he started the majority of the season at centre-back, he then played at right-back, then moved to Feyenoord, so I the guy can play pretty much anywhere, but what's very pleasing to me is he plays pretty damn well anywhere. Maybe just maybe now that he's came up the road, he can maybe get a bit of consistency in terms of his positioning and maybe take it to the next level. That's probably going to be the challenge of his career because he's done a wee bit of everything and he's right here. He's a solid seven out of 10, but if he wants to break it in and make it to the next level, he's maybe got to get some consistency in terms of his positioning. So I'm very, very curious to see where he's going to play. For us, as a game, it could be anywhere. It could be sent off, it could be right back, it could be left back, it could be CDM. But before we get to more of the old competition for places, finishing up the numbers and stats properly at the age of 22 years old, he has played a total of 130 games in his young career. Now, we did talk a lot about his comfortability on the ball and everything, but his assist totals, his goal totals and everything like that won't jump out yet. It won't look absolutely fantastic, but it is worth noting over the, just the last year and a half, he started to progress more as a right back. And again, he's not got the Tavernier numbers. Do you know why? Because no one's got the Tavernier numbers. So to look at these lack of assists and high goal tallies and everything, and say, oh, he must be crap going forward. No, he is a danger because of that pace. And where, again, he maybe lacked maybe the defensive strength 
of a Sterling. He's quick. He gets into loads of interceptions. He dives in and gets the ball. And that's what he wants to do is eat, sleeps and breathes on that football. And those 130 games that we talked about the 100, um, at the age of 22, I should say, is all top flight professional. Or the some of them, I think over 28 of them was actually in the second division of Dutch football. But again, that's still professional football. He's impressive use stats at every sort of age group in terms of Dutch football I've not included or even in the, the reserve league or youth league, I should say, haven't been included because I didn't really learn much there as you're playing against laddies that will probably not make the next stage. But second division football we can actually look at and again 130 games at the age of 22 it looks like an experienced campaigner compared to what we've seen for the majority of this window and again we're getting a young lad who's played over 50 games in the top flight of Dutch football at the age of 22 that's not too bad as well ladies and gentlemen that's it for the numbers and stats that's it for his positional breakdown and again the competition for places is a confusing one because does he naturally come in as come in as a right back I think he might actually be because remember before things started to go wrong before the wallet started to shrink and before rebuilds were shelved and halted and put any place because of all the mistakes off the actual park it looked like Tavernier was moving on and Stellan was coming and we needed a bit of right back reinforcement and this would naturally be something like that but with Tavernier staying here with better the devil that you know than the devil you actually don't in terms of the skipper this might free up Sterling to maybe move in to the centre mid position and sort of solidify that partnership with Diamandi and Connor Barron this could be the free in nature as I'd actually argue I think Sterling's moved away for the right back spot you see when I see him as a centre mid and how he can play and he shores up in that energy and that bite that he's got I actually want to maybe a centre mid for us, no naturally a right back. So this could be a very good option. And honestly, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, I feel like he should be pushing Tavernier right, right away, ladies and gentlemen, because of how well he played or how consistent he played. And obviously, Tavernier's got a much higher ceiling, but consistency isn't exactly the skipper's thing right now. So he's probably gone right in there. But with how defensively vulnerable we are at centre back, he can do a job in there as well. Left back as well and in. The CDM, so we should be seeing a lot of them, ladies and gentlemen, because it could be a bit of everything. But it's all in Clement to see where he's going to be, and is this going to be the guy that's going to push the old skipper to the sidelines? We'll have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in terms of where this laddie is going to play, because there is one thing for sure, as nobody knows for sure, as he's played pretty much everywhere and again he does it pretty damn well but that's it ladies and gentlemen that's it for the old player profile i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down there on the latest signing it's smart it's clever i like it and it ticks a box that we badly needed tick at this point before he came in now we've done the talk we've walked the walk we've talked the talk now it's on the laddie to go out there in the park and day some things and make us all look and be very very happy but that's it ladies and gentlemen let me know your thoughts and opinions and i it's transfer deadline day depending on which order you've watched the videos you've probably seen too much of me but i i'll see you in the next one i've been cedron only too thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye